We actually see that this uh, uh, will actually eliminate the need for a dedicated EM crew. Uh, will drive because the costs will be relatively low once you've got a vessel in the air and you can go both ways, as it were. And will allow improved integration between the two different uh, disciplines. And why would you want to do that? Well, actually, you'd want to do that because you're going to be able to produce volume displays of information that the reservoir engineers and asset managers today only have along wellbore tracks. And as I say, size is good at structure, gives you thickness, can give you loss, and the loss information can give you porosity. EM on its own can give you the fluid content within certain constraints, but by combining them, you can actually start looking at a bunch of characteristics that neither technology can provide on their own. And we actually think that this, sorry Dave, is actually going to be the um, bridge that allows EM to get across to that uh, nirvana on the other side of the Grand Canyon. Uh, well, it's not that great, but it cuts a point. And so um, we actually see that uh, uh, a lot of appraisal and development work being undertaken today using uh, seismic and borehole measurements is actually going to be superseded by combining EM surface measurements with the uh, higher resolution ocean bottom measurements. Just a couple of last comments uh, before I close. Um, I say, basically, the oil companies are faced with a major challenge. We've got diff diff a lot of mature basins, we're leaving a lot of oil behind. There's tremendous commercial incentive to try and maximize hydrocarbon recovery. We believe, I believe certainly, that stationary receivers will be used for seismic acquisition. Uh, that will increase quite dramatically. And that to integrate the EM and seismic will become a stand critical element in this process and will actually become a standard practice for appraisal and development going forward. This year, there's almost a billion dollars worth of demand for ocean bottom data. We reckon 900 million. CBA Geophysical gave a presentation about a month ago. They said a billion. So it's essential of order. Dick, you might comment. Um, the actual market size is going to be limited by supply. Uh, currently, we have three crews operating. Western GECO have one. This excludes shallow water. Uh, CG Veritas have one. BGP have one. Geokinetics have one and Fairfield and Seabed have one node crew each. With the current uh, credit crunch, and quite clearly, when I was putting this slide together on Friday, on my way back from Kazakhstan, um, the market situation is a little bit different. The stock market went up 4% this morning by the coffee break. Um, but it's interesting to see how uh, investors are going to view uh, what we see as the need for growth in this area, because the current demand exceeds supply by a factor of almost two, and we see that, don't see that changing in the next few years. So with that, I'd like to invite questions. I'd like to thank BP Total for the data examples, and my fellow contractors for some of the technology uh, pictures, and RXT for permission to present the paper, and I'd like to thank you for your attention. So with, the, with the, what we're arguing, uh, and I'm not an EM expert, but any stretch of imagination, I can just about spell it. Um, the, uh, by having better resolution from the two independent measurements of where the fluids have gone, we believe we're going to be able to identify the permeability barriers. And then from that, and in combination with the downhole measurements, actually start to look at what the actual permeability is. It's an infer, it's not direct. Okay, I mean, that, that, I don't know how much discussion we're permitted in this, this kind of auditorium, but I mean, that kind of thing has already been shown uh, in time lapse approaches where obviously you get uh, pressure, temperature changes in the reservoir and you can, you can actually start to see the barriers uh, over time that you can't see on the, foot on, the, on the initial technology. So it's interesting to see what the EM approach can add to that. What, 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 we're, what we're looking at 
OBC and EM in a time-lapse fashion. So, so, so you're, you're exactly right. Um, one of the things I did do at PGS, which never really saw the light of day, was actually look at the electrokinetic effect for a while because there were some people actually claiming they could measure permeability from the oh, EMS well, uh, And uh, yeah, well, Kurt Strack, who runs the, the company that we bought into uh, to help us develop this uh, cable-based transient EM system, uh, he said, look, Chris, we can get enough out of EM as it is without getting into black art. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, the uh, electrokinetic effect uh, has been shown uh, in very limited penetration distance to be able to measure permeability. And having, well, whether you want seismoelectric or electroseismic, so whether you're putting an electrical source in and getting a seismic response out or vice versa. In fact, the first paper in geophysics in 1936 was on the seismoelectric effect. Um, this technology would enable you to look at it. So it's, it's, it's something that's a bit blue sky. Uh, Exxon Mobil spent, or Exxon, sorry, spent a fortune on uh, electroseismic, and uh, the guy who handled that is uh, now retired and consulting and developing his own technology. So, who knows? Thanks, great presentation. Uh, we're Richard Heath Reed. Um, Web ties and um, cyber calibration are always issues for the day to day to physicists. Uh, what do you feel that the implications are for a um, greater extent of uh, VSP and BPO using multi asthmus uh, microwaves and so on? VSP is the real time to depth conversion, absolutely. You've got measurement within the, the limits of the stretch of the wireline uh, of the depth of the sensor, and you have the direct measurement of the you know, travel time uh, to it. So v VSP, I mean, the first thing we, when we get involved, uh, especially on a converted wave survey design, the first thing I ask is, have you got multi-component VSP? Because it, it's an invaluable tool. Um, even with dipole sonic, you know, you, you don't love the bit that's got the worst VPVS ratios, and so 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 you, you end up having to do sensitivity analysis. In fact, we're just going through a project right now where the impact and the un the uncertainty in the oil companies' minds about the the upper level uh, gamma ratio, the VPVS ratio, um, could change the economics of the survey they've already committed to by a factor of three. Uh, I'm also thinking about the sort of as a muscle aspect of the last and so on, and rather than just a straightforward um, one-dimensional velocity calibration. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, 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 it's it's a very valuable tool because uh, it, it provides a unique uh, sort of dimension transfer because it, it, it gives you time to depth, and if you do a 3D VFP, yes, it gives you time time to depth. In, in, in all that. So yeah, it, it's an integral part of the process. Jack, I'd turn the microphone off. Oh, well, believing that you were. <laughs> okay. Well, I'll be fully retired by lunchtime. <laughs> okay, going from streamer down to seabed is a, is a big step in the right direction. But how about going from seabed down into uh, virtual source technology? Do you see that as a good um, forward technology? Cost effective? If, if, if you can get the cost right, yes. I mean, it, it's all to do with relative production rates. Uh, and again, you know, as, as you well know, you, you were championing it for, for, for many years, having permanent sensors uh, is quite clearly going to give you the best geophysical data. But not many oil companies seem to be convinced of that yet in terms of the value proposition. And uh, putting sources on the seabed uh, for, uh, is, is going to increase the cost even more. But it would give you even better data. Some guys who, who, who work in the defense business, uh, and they reckon, because of A-priori <coughs> information, when an F-16 goes overhead at Mach 2, they can tell from the radar cross-section response whether its fuel tanks are full or empty. And when we do 4D seismic, we almost use no information whatsoever from the previous data until we come to compare it. We could actually do much better in terms of how we image changes in a reservoir by using some of these a priori techniques that have been developed for both radar and acoustic measurements. And that, to me, would allow a much more economic application of both permanent source and permanent receiver.